Welcome to my third installment in my series, What to Expect When You're Collecting. I created this series to talk about my favorite publishers, the top five, Suntub, Centipede, SST, Earthling, and Levidian, to give people who've never collected these books some insight into what do they offer? What are the books like? What is it like buying from them? Are there any secret magic words I need to know to get on an email newsletter list to buy a book? Um, and then once they do buy the book, well, how long does it take to, to get the book, the shipping, the pre-order window, and then of course, what is that experience like when they have that book in their hot little hands? Today, I bring you SST. SST stands for Short Scary Tales. It's a publisher out of the UK, that's United Kingdom. And like quite a few of the publishers I collect from in this very small world, it is a one-man show, and Paul Fry is that one guy. Paul Fry works his ass off. He's the marketing team, the publisher, the product manager, the web <laughs> IT guy. He does everything, and he sends these books out. According to the website, SST was started in 1999 and they published their first book in 2000, a horror collection called Cold Storage. Now, I wasn't collecting back then, not these fine limited editions, that is. But for me, SST came onto my radar because they were doing some um, in tandem publishings with Cemetery Dance. So Cemetery Dance would do the U.S. limited edition, and at the same time, SST would do the U.K. limited edition, which the way, if you know anything about the way rights work to a book, it, there are U.K. rights and North American rights. So I saw them as a sister business, a partner business, uh, and they did a lot of the Richard Chismar stuff, the Gwendy books, Chasing the Boogeyman they've recently done, um, and, and some, some works that Cemetery Dance did, but they couldn't be further apart, in my opinion, from Cemetery Dance. But let's get into some of the details. So first up is price. And because it is a one-man show, the, the price can be a little lower. Obviously, if you have an army of employees, your price per book needs to reflect that because you need to pay salaries, health benefits, and, and all that other stuff that comes with uh, the big overhead. That's not to say that Paul Fry doesn't have help. He doesn't have employees. I just never hear about him. <laughs> Could be an army of Oompa Loompas. But SST's prices are at the lowest end of the range from the publishers I collect. And while they are the least expensive, they are not cheap. Because cheap implies that you compromise on quality. And with SST, you don't. You get everything and more. I think there are some publishers that publish books at the same price point that deliver less than what SST offers. And there are publishers who have a higher price point that also offer less than SST. Um, the books usually cost around 39 pounds. <laughs> so I play day trader when I collect from SST. I look at, oh, what is the dollar doing against the uh, pound sterling in the UK today? Is it, is it going to be a, a, a Yankee sale? Because if the dollar is strong, you get a greater value. But it's 39 pounds, usually that translates to about 54 bucks for an incredibly well-made book loaded with art. In fact, not to name any names, <coughs> Subterranean Press! There are other publishers who offer books for $125, a beautiful dust jacket, but no interior art. So it's, a, it's an up elevated trade edition with a signature page. That's all it is. So what sorts of books are you going to get with your 39 pounds? Well, the, the SST selection is right in my sweet spot. Most of SST authors are the ones I want to read. 
And SST does something really cool. He bundles them. He does sets from an author. For example, the Paul Tremblay set. I don't quite recall if at the time of the pre-order for A Head Full of Ghosts, if he said there were other ones that were coming from Paul Tremblay, from SST, um, but he ended up pre- publishing A Head Full of Ghosts, Disappearance at Devil's Rock, Cabin at the End of the World, Survivor Song, Growing Things, The Little Sleep, No Sleep to Wonderland, and he just announced Paul Bear's Club. All these books are done with dust jackets by Daniel Serra and interior art by Daniel Serra, except for Paul Bear's Club. Maybe Daniel Serra's availability wasn't quite there for that edition. Paul got Vince and Sammy to do the interiors, but on the shelf, they're all going to look beautiful. They're all going to have that Daniel Serra art wraparound dust jackets. Um, so when you look on your shelf, you can't help but shelf them together uh, in the order they were published, probably. That's what I do. Sorry, sucker for that announcement order. But he's also done sets by Mallerman and Grady Hendrix. And when he did those, he announced that as a bundle. So you bought all four Mallerman books uh, at one low price, which essentially gave you a free book. You bought three, you got one free. He did the same thing with Grady Hendrix. Uh, He hasn't done that with Stephen Graham Jones, who's another author he publishes. And in all of these sets... SST pairs an author with an artist, so Paul Tremblay and Daniel Serra, Josh Mallerman and Ben Baldwin, Stephen Graham Jones and Francesco Gianni, Grady Hendrix, and Raiko Murakami, although the last book he did from Grady Hendrix was uh, with artwork by Francois Villancourt. SST also does a lot of Lansdale books, and with Lansdale, you'll get artwork from Dirk Berger. Now, I don't know where the opinions fall on pairing an author with an artist. I, for one, really like it. I happen to love these artists that Paul Fry selects, so I have no objection to their art. And I suppose if you love an author, but you really don't click with the artist assigned, it can be a bummer. So there's a little bit of a risk with tying up all the books from a certain author with one artist only, but I like it. I like the presentation on the shelf. It does it does demand that you bundle the books together. And considering I only have Paul Tremblay books from SST, it's not a hard thing for me to do to bundle them together. Paul Fry has also done like one-off authors. So he's not stuck in these sets. But I think it's a thing that differentiates him from other publishers. The books they do are amazing. They almost all come without a slipcase, and they all have dust jackets. Early on, SST, we're doing printed boards, where the art is printed on the boards itself. But they've since moved over to doing very elegant cloth boards and foil stamping on the covers. I think it's a good move, though I do get a kick out of laminate covers. There are a lot of people that think it looks cheap and it doesn't quite have the gravity of a cloth board or or other nice materials. I don't agree, um, but he's moved to this model and I think it works out really well. They all have beautiful, gorgeous signature pages with full color art. And I don't know what the average is for art in an SST edition, but it always feels loaded with art. And he'll have a mixture of black and white illustrations and then glossy color, full color illustrations in some of his books. It's definitely a way to keep the cost down and the elegance up. They're all Smithsonian binding. And while they lack the flair of stained edges or ribbon page markers or any of those other additions that elevate a book, I I think they are stunners, beautiful works for, in like, I can't stress it enough, an insanely low price. The limitation on these editions are usually 400 copies, but he's recently bumped it up to 500 for some titles. And he doesn't do any other editions. So there are no tiers. It's just the one edition 
normally. He has done some lettered editions, but I'm speaking basic SST collecting right now. Buying from SST is, like most of the publishers I collect, a newsletter first experience. You have to subscribe to the SST newsletter. You'll get advanced notice of new titles, and if you buy a title from a certain author, you'll get an advance, advance notice of the next book by that author that SST may do. So for example, I ordered the Paul Tremblay bundle of No Sleep to Wonderland and um, The Little Sleep. So I got an advance email that Paul Bear's Club was available. And then once he gave that advance notice to the crowd that bought Paul Tremblay, he released it to his newsletter subscribers. So they'll have a shot at it and then it'll go on his site. Of course, you wouldn't know to go to his site unless you have the newsletter, but that's the way you do it. Just subscribe to the newsletter. It's very easy. Uh, and if you are stateside, you, you may want to wait a day or two to see what the market does on the dollar versus the pound. It's silly, but you could do that. But I wouldn't wait too long. Some of these titles sell out in a heartbeat. When you buy that pre-order wait isn't very long normally. I think, you know, when you when you buy the bundles, when you when I bought the Josh Mellerman bundle, that was four books all at once. The first one came pretty quick, and so did the second one, but you know, it takes some time to finish out that bundle. So it can look like you, I had a long pre-order wait because I paid for the book, you know, two years ago, and then I just got it. But in reality, it was just I was paying for a book that wasn't even near ready for printing. Normally, his books are very close to done by the time he takes uh, money for them. For example, Daphne was pretty recent, and it's already at the printer. And you can buy a copy of Daphne right now. It's still available as I do this. Daphne by Josh Mallerman. Art by Ben Baldwin. Enjoyment by you. So when it ships... You'll get a notice, um, you'll get a shipping notification that your books are on the way. I can only speak to being in Tennessee, what it's like to get a book from England. When I lived in Chicago, it came pretty fast. But now, for some reason, it takes a little longer to get to me. Of the publishers I collect, SST does take the longest to reach me from the moment I get the shipping notice to when I do the unboxing here. That's really just a proximity issue. I don't blame Paul Fry. And I gotta say the shipping rates from SST are incredibly fair. I think I paid more for cemetery dance shipping. Paul Fry's done what he can to keep those fees as low as possible. I don't know how much of his customer base is stateside, but he does a lot of U.S. authors, invariably, probably a lot more U.S. buyers. And although I think the boxes I've gotten from SST have been among the most abused <laughs> in the mail, the books are always ding-free because Paul Fry packs them so well. You'll get, um, this is the only other publisher I collect that does their own branded tape. Suntup's the other one. So Suntop and SST have their own tape. And when you see that on the box, you just get giddy. <laughs> the boxes are much larger than they need to be, but they need to be much larger than they need to be, right? So they get a lot of space between the book and the box. You'll hear Uncle Beef Daddy talk about that all the time. And it's loaded with packing peanuts to fill that gap. And the book is wrapped in this cool rice paper. Well, here, let Jeff show you. They also come in rice paper and bubble wrap. And um, with bookmarks and such. So here they are. It's crazy that each book is individually wrapped with this rice paper and these stickers. It seems... Um, kind of time consuming and laborious but he does it and i like it and i love it <laughs> i feel like this was in another video i feel like i'm in another video right now i feel like i'm in two places at once
It's pretty weird. Another nice touch that Paul Fry puts in there are these little note cards thanking a handwritten note from Paul Fry with each book I've bought from him thanking me for the purchase. It it's it's a tremendous thing to do. It's a very nice thing to do. I do worry about Paul Fry working himself too much. <laughs> but it's such a great touch and I think in this small press community it means a lot. So I've kept every single little postcard I've gotten from Paul Fry. So now that I've talked about all the generalities, let's get into my favorite SST books. First up is Paradise Sky. This is Joe Lansdale's Western about Deadwood Dick, Nat Love, um, cowboy in the Old West, dealing with all kinds of issues. Brilliant book. This is my second favorite Lansdale, right behind the thicket. And I think Nat Love may be my favorite Lansdale character. Lansdale's also written of Nat Love in other stories, and they're all equally amazing. But this was my second SST book. This is the one that had the illustrated boards. What's really cool is that the boards are illustrated with different art that's on the dust jacket. And what I like about that was that he kept all the words off the art on the dust jacket because they're here. That is a cool move. I love the naked dust jackets. Uh, I know what the book is on the shelf. I don't need it to be advertised on the spine necessarily. I know what I own. And the book is loaded, loaded with art from the inimitable Ben Baldwin, who now does the Josh Mallerman books. And Dirk Berger now does the rest of the Lansdale books. And, of course, it is signed by both Joe Lansdale and Ben Baldwin. Seriously, I just counted. There's got to be at least 12 illustrations in this, not including the end paper, the dust jacket, the boards, and the signature sheet. Up next is the most recent book I've gotten from SST. You may have seen me unbox it here on the channel, and that's Inspection by Josh Mallerman. This is the last book in the four-book bundle that SST did back in 2020. And SST has recently added, as I've said, Daphne to their Josh Mallerman library, also illustrated by Ben Baldwin. But here we have an amazing wraparound dust jacket, the beautiful cloth boards with the title treatment, foregoing the foil for the moment, but still paying attention to title treatment and typography. My number for the Josh Mallerman bundle is three. It's actually my SST number across almost all my books. I don't remember when it started, but Paul Fry gave me that number and I've asked for it every time. So this is uh, one of the releases that has full color illustrations as well as black and white illustrations. The next book is actually the first book I've purchased from SST. It's The Listener by Robert McCammon. This was an example of Cemetery Dance and SST producing a book in tandem because right after CD announced their edition of The Listener, SST announced theirs. I didn't buy this one direct from SST. I actually bought it from Camelot. But before I got this book, I already had the lettered edition from Cemetery Dance. And it cost vastly more than this, and I prefer this one, hands down, to, to the one that Cemetery Dance produced. I would say Cemetery Dance phoned it in on the listener. That's the impression I got. Just was not up to their normal standards. And that's a shame, because the listener is an epic tale. This book has artwork by Vincent Sammy. Very, again, plain boards, but beautifully done. It's slightly larger than most of SST's other books, but I wouldn't call it oversized. And look at that signature page. Full color, beautiful stuff. Nice page design throughout and stunning full page art. I believe this is completely sold out at SST, but it wasn't for a long time, and I wouldn't shut up about this book. It's, an, it's a great book. If you like Stephen King uh, and you like The Shining, you'll love The Listener. 
But if you like Robert McCammon, you know that already. He's an epic storyteller. The guy's brilliant. My next book is Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Art by Daniel Serra, who's one of my favorite artists working. Um, all SST editions come with bookmarks. He's since made them a lot bigger than this. So you really won't lose your place. But again, the beautiful understated boards with the foil stamping, nice title treatment. Art here, interiors, also by Daniel Serra. Beautiful full color signature sheet. I've read two Paul Tremblay books, Head Full of Ghosts and Cabin at the End of the World. I think Cabin at the End of the World is my favorite of the two, but not by a whole lot because Head Full of Ghosts is also amazing. And the set looks amazing on the shelf as well because most of the life of your books is spent on a shelf. You just see a spine. And when they're SST books, that has a presence all its own. Last up is Wet Juju by Joe Lansdale. This is from a set of four volumes that SST published to collect Joe Lansdale's short fiction. It's not complete. I recently interviewed Joe Lansdale and he corrected me on that. I thought it was his complete short works, but no. <laughs> The guy has uh, at least four big chunking books of short works and then some. Paul Fry divided up these short works into themed collections. So there was crime, western, weird or cosmic, and then horror. This is the horror collection, and it is uh, in, an enormous baby. I don't recall exactly what the price point was on this but i want to say it was like 50 bucks for this book and if you could see all of those darkened pages are pieces of art it's loaded with art the cover is by vincent chong and the interiors are by ben baldwin and there are so many interiors i haven't read these collections yet but if you're a Joe Lansdale fan and you want to get all of his short works, you would be chasing forever on eBay trying to get every single edition that has a Joe Lansdale story in it. So for, for me, this was a great way to break into Joe Lansdale collecting. The Naked Book for a book of its size is stunning, well made. It's held up really well over time. I have considered storing them on the side to take some of the pressure off of that spine but i haven't i may still do it i don't know so that's it that's my sst video i hope it was helpful for you if you're considering buying from sst subscribe to the newsletter see what he offers up and if there's anything you like if there's any author you read buy with confidence you'll be very happy you did so thanks for joining me this time hope to see you again next time and in the meantime stay frosty